Hello everybody, Jacob from Would You Be This here. Um, as you can see, I got a thousand dollar bankroll. It's not all counted out, but that's a thousand dollar bankroll right there. 400 black, 100 red, 500 green. Um, today I'm gonna talk about light side, just overall talk about light side and uh, pros, cons of it. Um, I know I was doing those six and eight videos, but guys, I kind of lost track of what I was doing because I got my son's football, uh, different things going on at school, plus, uh, football betting stuff that I do and, and I just kind of lost track of what I was doing so sorry if you guys were interested in that sorry but I, I kind of like I said I lost my track on it so I had to move on um, if you guys want me to return to whatever I was trying to do there I can try to go back to what I was doing but anyway moving on so in these next couple videos I'm going to talk about three or four light side stuff then three or four dark side then some hybrid stuff right um, let's start with this Every single way to play can win. Every one of them. And I'm just talking about the broad strategy of being a light side player, of being a dark side player, of being a hybrid player. All of them are winners. All of them are also losers. All right, so every strategy light side has the potential to be amazing, right? To have a huge day. Just like every strategy dark side has the potential to win a bunch of money. And every hybrid has the potential. What falls into that is what do you do when it doesn't go good? Or when it goes mediocre? Or when it goes break even? What do you do when it's not perfect? When it's not a 50 roller? All right, that's where the strategy comes in on light side, right? Because light side is two things dominant. Number one, the seven doesn't matter for light side. I know people want to talk about how it does. It doesn't. You're already accepting that. You're already accepting that the seven is your big bad, is your boogeyman, is your big ugly. You're already accepting that the seven is the problem. All right? That, that's already there. So what matters in light side? Two things matter the most in light side. First thing is, is length of roll, right? Because light side, in every aspect of light side, outside of like one hit can't miss type plays, one hit can't miss type plays kind of fall in their only own category. But okay, so other than that, every other aspect of light side is based in getting an extended roll. A roll that is above average. A roll that is going to allow you to press your bets up and make money outside of the normal expected rolls. So, per shooter, all the math people say your expect expectation should be 8.5 rolls. Right, that's the average 8.5 rolls. Now, obviously, every shooter is not going to do that. If every shooter was going to do that, everyone would be millionaires because you'd know that you had until 8.5 rolls, right? Well, that's not the case, right? What it means is that if you took 100 shooters, the average would be 8.5 rolls, right? So that's the expectation. Well, when you're playing light side, that expectation, the roll amount matters a lot, right? Roll quality. What I mean by roll quality is, is because light side lives in these six numbers, right? Four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. That's where they live, right? You can play the field on the light side, but most people don't. They play place bets or they play combats plus odds, right? So they live in the four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. So how many combinations is that? Let's let's talk about the combinations that they live in. Three, seven, twelve, seventeen. 21, 24 combinations out of 36. So they live in this 24 out of 36, which guys is two thirds. It's two thirds of the combinations in the game. So you live in a two thirds world when you play light side. Two thirds world. Now, some light side strategies incorporate the horn or the seven. We're not talking about that here. We're talking about the two thirds you live in. So you have six dead rolls, which are your horn numbers, they're dead rolls. And then you have six killers, right? In the sevens. Every other role is good for you as a light side player. So 
Some people dummy it down even more and they only play the inside or they only play the six and eight. All of it is light side. Now, when you do that, you're taking risk away, but you're also taking probability away. So light side has advantages in the sense that light side is the way you're going to play where you're going to be able to take a small amount of money and make a whole bunch, right? That can happen on light side. That really can't happen on pure dark side. Not, it's hard to take a small amount and make a big amount. You have to have a bunch of winners in a row and you have to be parlaying your bets and stuff. And on hybrid, because hybrid is essentially light side with a dark side cover, it's harder as well because you are going to have some negative hits based in hitting your point. But in light side purely, that's what we're talking about in this video, you live in this world. Your world is from the 4 to the 10 with no 7. All right? The 7 doesn't matter. Again, guys, I, I, I want to repeat this. For light side players, the seven does not matter because you're already accepting your fate on the seven that 16 and a half percent of the time you're going to get smacked. All right. And you're going to get smacked for a bunch of money, whatever you have out there. Right. You're already accepting that and you're trading that that acceptance for the potential of having a role that is the role of the day and you cash in all right that's the trade-off in light side right not a terrible trade-off for you guys that like to gamble this is the way to play right if you guys have some gamble in you and and what it, obviously all this is gambling but i'm talking about the guys that are willing to just you know go for it those guys those ladies as well they're willing to say you know what i'm going for this all right bang light side play that's where you want to be all right Light side, believe it or not, takes the most discipline. Light side players have to be the most disciplined. And why is that? Because when you're playing light side, you're putting most likely the most money out with the expectation that you need to get to a certain number of rolls before you're profitable. Dark side hybrid don't necessarily have those expectations. All right. So it takes the most discipline to play light side. And it's actually not close. The most disciplined by far to be a light side player. So let's get into some light side play. Let's start with what we just said, the two-thirds bet, right? Two-thirds of the game we're going to play. 160 across. And let's talk about. the positive and negative expectations here, all right? And we'll roll, we're gonna roll some of this because I know you guys wanna see craps play, all right? Who wants to just to listen to me talk? All right, so right here, boom, we're gonna be off on the come out, set us a point. Most people like to be off. That was a weird, that was a weird sound. All right, so we got a come out seven, so it saved us some money there. And we got an 11, okay. So again, those are two rolls that are not in that two thirds, right? So remember, you're, you're fighting that. You're fighting a whole third of the game. All right, there's our eight, hard eight. All right, so now we got a point. Now we're working, all right? So what does it take to make our 160 back, right? We gotta have at least five hits to make our 160 back unless we hit all fours and tens. And seven out, ouch. All right, so what happened there? We have four rolls, seven, 11, eight, seven. All right, we didn't get nowhere near that eight and a half, but we lost $160. This is what I was just talking about, about light side tends to lose the most when they lose, right? So let's drop 160 here, do this again. Light side tends to lose the most when they lose. Loses the quickest as well. They also win the quickest. All right, here we go, coming out. Aces, that's another dead roll. So again, you're talking about roll count, roll quality. You're looking, there's a three. ATS players are pretty happy. All right, so two dead rolls. And then a 10, okay, so we're hard 10 there. We're out on a 10, right? That's our third roll, we have one nothing. 
We have one nothing on this. And a nine. Okay, so there's our first win. $35. So now light side players, you have to make a choice here. Are you gonna collect or are you gonna press, right? Or are you gonna do both? You can do both. Why press? Pressing in light side is the second most important thing. I talked about the first most important thing being roll count. Pressing as a light side player is the second most important thing. And why is that? Because if you just set this and forget this and just say, okay, I'm going to try to win five times. And that's the only way I'm going to make profit is if every shooter I get five winners. You know how hard that's going to be for all your shooters to have five winners? You're just going to lose money over and over and over. You have to press because when you press, you're giving yourself the opportunity to make more than the expected, right? So this is a this is a win, right? So this is profit. So we're gonna press our six, all right? Now we've only collected five dollars, but in this case, if we happen to roll that six, now we're gonna win 70. And so instead of winning 35 and 35 for 70, we'll have 75 as a win. All right, so let's go let's see what happens. There's aces, that's another dead roll. It was not a three, it was aces. And there's an eight, okay, hard eight. So same same thing here, we're gonna win 35. So that's two wins, and I think we've rolled seven times, six or seven times. Let's press that eight. All right, so now we have our six and eight pressed up. If we roll either one of those, we get essentially a double win, right? There's a five, okay. I think that's our eighth, it's either seventh or eighth roll. All right, 35 on the five, let's press it. All right, so now we have three numbers pressed up. We've collected $20, All right? So remember, we have 160 to start. And this is how many rolls this is taking. There's our six, that's a good one for us. So we're gonna win 70, All right? So this is a double win, essentially, on, on the original expected win. All right, so now this is like winning our fourth time instead of our third time. Or this is like winning our fifth time, right? Instead of our uh, th fourth time because we've had one, two, three winners. So now we have five wins instead of four. So now, if you take this back down, right? There's 155 plus we've collected 20. So that's why pressing matters because instead of taking five rolls, it only took us four to meet what we were trying to meet, right? So now once you once you meet your five five win goal, now you're playing for free. And that's that's the key to pressing. That's what you're trying to do with pressing. You're trying to get in a spot where the casino is no longer in the advantage. They no longer you have more money in your rack than you started the shooter with than you have on the table, minus what's on the table. So this is what light side can do for you. Now, at this point. Because you, your couple presses earned you your living here. Now you're in a profit. Now anything you do is profitable, right? So even if a seven rolls here, you still won like 20 bucks on the shooter. Now it took a bazillion rolls. There's a nine. But you're still a winner, right? Now 35. Now you can do whatever you want. You can just collect these and they're winners every time. Or you can go back to pressing. Let's press the four. We're going to press the green chip every time. Because at this point, everything we do is profit. And we got a five, okay, four, one. That was a weird roll. Another 35, we're just gonna press across the board here. We're collecting a little every time, pressing the green chip. And so this is a long roll. This is the first part of what I said matters the most in, cra in light side crabs, the length of the roll. So this long roll is allowing us to accomplish over the expected, over the expected 8.5, right? Now we're able to accomplish all this other stuff. But it's the length of roll that mattered. There's a 549. And guys, honestly, if there's a long roll and you don't win on it, you're you're you shouldn't play craps. You should be done playing craps. Would be nice to hit a repeater here of some type. There's a five. There we go. 
So this length of rod, we're obviously in the teens. I'm not sure exactly where we're at, but it has to be in the 11, 12, 13 range. So there's a $70 win. Press that, press the 10. All right, so now we're pressed all the way across the board. We're at 320. Now again, remember, this is all profit. So now we're just trying to make a big day, right? There's a 12. Now we're just trying to make it into our shot of the day. We're trying to win a bunch of money here. Press, press, press. Back to back 12. It's amazing. That's a really, really, really amazing outcome. And seven up. But we won whatever we won there. I don't really know how much we actually won. But we obviously had an extra 160 out on the board than our original. We had to have made at least 160 because that's when we went to profit. So I know we lost the original 160. So let's see where we're at. 300. Four, five. So 725. Eight. Nine. 905 so we you know we lost that original 160 so that would have put us at 840 so we're at 905 so we made 65 dollars all right on that shooter profited essentially 65 dollars from where we started now again remember we had 160 on the board that we were using because it was a long roll because we were playing with profit so we were using that to try to be better, right? If we would have hit, you know, one more roll, well, now we're almost even again. But that's the idea behind the light side. That's what the light side is, right? So that's when you're playing a cross bidding. Let's do it again, all right? Remember, the two things that matter most in light side are the amount of rolls, quality of roll, right? You don't want a bunch of horn numbers because they're not doing anything for you, all right? So amount of rolls and quality of roll, and then pressing. Because pressing can get you to your profit where you need to be faster. It's going to get you there faster. And now, once you press and you get to the where you've made your 160, you've got to get that money off the board so you're playing for free. All right, let's see if we can do it again. Coming out. And we got a nine. We're on the nine. And remember, in light side play, if you're not playing the, the come out, it's a dead roll. It's a dead roll. And seven out. This is the problem with the light side, right? PSOs, short rolls kill you. All right, let's go 160. Oh, come back here. And a three, long roll at three, interesting. Again, dead roll. You're already one dead roll on the come out. Now you have two dead rolls. There's a third dead roll. There's a seven. Remember, the shooter's only supposed to last eight and a half rolls. Fourth dead roll. And a three. Fifth dead roll and an 11. This can happen, guys. This kind of stuff definitely happens. There's a 10. So on our sixth roll, which is also dead in this in the way we're playing, we now finally have a point and now we're live on six rolls. There's a six on our seventh roll. So let's press what we hit here. Seventh roll, we've only made five dollars. On the eighth roll, we lost. This is a perfect example of what can happen to the light side. This was, I mean, I couldn't have, I couldn't have forced it to be any better than this. As you saw, dead roll after dead roll after dead roll after dead roll after dead roll. Remember, the expectation is eight and a half rolls per shooter. So this got to the eighth roll and lost. This is not a surprise. This shouldn't be a surprise to you. This is why I say. The seven doesn't matter in light side play. You have to believe in the expectation of when it's going to come. You have to believe in that expectation. If you don't, you're fooling yourself. 
So what just happened here is we just lost in, in the nature of the game, in the natural part of the game, because we had so many dead rolls that when it got to that eighth roll, we had only won one, one roll. We had only had one hit because all the other previous six rolls before that, we were either not working or they were horn numbers or sevens. And guys, this happens. This happens a lot, actually. This happens way more than people think because a third of the other numbers in this case are dead rolls, right? So a third of the rolls are not, they're not live for you when you're doing this. All right, so let's do it again. And there's a dead roll, dead roll number one. That's an 11. And we got a 10, all right. So two dead rolls this time, now we're live. Let's see if it does any better. And a seven. Again, this is the light side to the T. You have to have longer rolls. You have to have rolls that have a higher quality. And what I mean by quality is I mean that they're in the boxes. They have to be four, five, six, eight, nine, or ten to make light side work. This is the biggest negative of all of light side play is that you are restricted to a certain specific group of rolls of numbers that have to roll for you to be a winner. Even if you're playing the pass line here, even if you're world betting, you're still not making enough to matter when you're losing on the second or third roll when you're live, right? Even if it's the eighth roll told, if it's the second roll you only won once, you still lost 100 bucks, even if you hit a few world bets. So again, in this instance, this is the huge, huge negative to light side. It's that the requirement for you to have a quality length of roll and a quality type of roll, you have to have a higher amount of rolls per shooter and you have to have, the quality has to be good. It means that you have to be hitting in the boxes for light side to work. Otherwise, it won't work, guys. It just will fail. It'll repeatedly fail because the obstacle that it's playing against is too large, right? And the obstacle is not the seven. The obstacle is the na nature of the game. It's the amount of rolls that the game allows you on average. When you're playing a light side, you're saying that, okay, the amount of rolls in this se se sequence are going to be better than average. When you're playing light side, that's what you get for the positive payout, right? That's why you get the positive payout on the bets. That's why you get more than one to one because you're accepting that you're saying, I believe it's going to be more than average. So the casino says, okay, if you want to bet that way, we're going to give you a little better deal. All right. Now, this is one of the reasons why light side players have the biggest roller coaster. All right. You have the biggest highs and you have the biggest lows as light side players because you do have these instances where you see a ton of rolls, but there's no winning. Right. You're only winning one or two bets per shooter and it's not enough. And this is why oftentimes people will claim that there's no way to win at craps. Craps, you just can't win because you, they always say you can't beat the seven. You can't, guys, you're not playing. Quit, quit thinking it's the seven that's the problem. It's the nature of the game. It's the gameplay factor that is the issue. It's that you're not believing that the average numbers are true. You're not believing that the eight and a half rolls per shooter is true. You're not believing that uh, you have to press. You're not believing that you're, you've got to have a quality of roll. It can't just be any random eight numbers. It has to be fours, fives, sixes, eights, and nines, and tens to be successful. And so this is why also that dice controllers are generally light side players because they believe that they can hit those numbers. So they believe that because of their, their skill that they're able to manufacture those numbers more often and give themselves an advantage and they're able to collect on the payout. So that's what dice control boils down to is why they do it. Guys, very few people control trying to roll a seven. Very few people do um, because it's a negative aspect, right? People wanna be positive.
They want the positive payouts. They don't just want them to get the one to one on the seven, even though it probably makes more sense. Um, they they don't want to do that. So what happens here is when you're playing light side, and I'm playing across the numbers because that that's two thirds of the combinations. You're actually getting them. All right. If you just play the six and eight, or you just play inside or whatever, you lose. You're losing risk. You're you're having less risk on the table. You're having less probability. So. It actually works out the same. Um, if you roll them all out, six and eight inside or four and 10, or all of them, between the risk, between the payouts, between the probability, it all really works out the same. So in my opinion, if you're playing light side, you might as well play all the numbers, all right? You might as well get the whole two thirds of the combinations in your favor if you're gonna play light side. That way you're not having more dead rolls inside that eight and a half total rolls, right? If you take the four and 10 off, now you've just given uh, the game back another sixth of the rolls, all right? You've just given back six rolls. So now you're down to 18. So now you're at half of the amount of rolls, right? You're at half. You only have half the probability now if you take the four and 10 off. I know a lot of people, they like to just play inside. You're only getting, you know, you're... <laughs> You're only getting 18 combinations, which is half of the game. Sounds great. But the fact of the matter is, if you're living that eight and a half rolls is the average, well, now you're living in a world where you only have four. That's a lot harder. So now I get the risk is less. But is it really worth giving up half? It's not. You guys, just play. If you're going to play last, I play all the numbers. All right, play all the numbers. Give yourself all the probability. But anyways, this is kind of my uh, initial light side video. We're going to do a few more. All right, we're going to incorporate the pass line, the odds, different things like that. We're going to talk about that stuff a little bit um, as well. But so this is my first video on this light side stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoy it. Hopefully you guys like this. Hopefully it's enlightening and hopefully it's eye-opening. If you disagree with anything I said on here, great. Put it in the comments. Tell me why I'm wrong. Um, tell me, tell me what I'm saying is wrong. That's fine. Um, if you, if you have a valid point, I'll, I'll listen to you. If you, but if you're just going to tell me I'm wrong and not give me no context, I'm just going to blow you off. Um, but if you have a valid point, let me know. But guys, this is all I'm showing is that why the light side is hard. And we got one kind of instance of how the light side works. When you have an extended roll, the quality roll has to be there. All right, so all it takes all of that for light side to work. You have to have the roll extend and you have to have the quality. That means that it has to be in the boxes. It has to be in the boxes. And then really to make light side work, because even if you have the roll quality, even if it's a length of roll, if you just same bet the whole way, now you're eliminating five hits right there. You have to have five hits before you're even profitable. So now you're putting yourself at a different disadvantage. You might as well press and get yourself to that profit quicker. We did see that one time. So anyways, guys, thank you for your time. This is Jacob from What You Mean This.